And now chapter 65, Lord Balaram visits Vrindavan. Shukdev Goswami said, O best of the Kurus, once Lord Balaram, eager to visit his well-wishing friends, mounted his chariot and traveled to Nanda Gokul. Having long suffered the anxiety of separation, the cowherd men and their wives embraced Lord Balaram. The Lord then offered respects to his parents, and they joyfully greeted him with prayers. Nanda and Yashoda prayed, O descendant of Dashada, O Lord of the universe, may you and your younger brother Krishna ever protect us. Saying this, they raised Sri Balaram onto their laps, embraced him, and moistened him with tears from their eyes. Lord Balaram then paid proper respects to the elder cowherd men, and the younger ones all greeted him respectfully. He met them all with smiles, handshakes, and so on dealing personally with each one according to age, degree of friendship, and family relationship. Then, after resting, the Lord accepted a comfortable seat, and they all gathered around Him. With voices faltering out of love for Him, those cowherds who had dedicated everything to lotus-eyed Krishna asked about the health of their dear ones in Dwarka, and Balaram in turn asked about the cowherds' welfare. The cowherd said, O Ram, are all our relatives doing well? And Ram, do all of you with your wives and children still remember us? It is our great fortune that sinful Kamsa has been killed and our dear relatives freed. And it is also our good fortune that our relatives have killed and defeated their enemies and found complete security in a great fortress. Honored to have the personal audience of Lord Balaram, the young gopi smiled and asked him, Is Krishna, the darling of the city women, living happily? Does he remember his family members, especially his father and mother? Do you think he will ever come back even once to see his mother? And does mighty armed Krishna remember the service we always did for him? For Krishna's sake, O descendant of Dishada, we abandoned our mothers, fathers, brothers, husbands, children, and sisters, even though these family relations are difficult to give up. But now, O oh Lord, that same Krishna has suddenly abandoned us and gone away, breaking off all affectionate ties with us. And yet, how could any woman fail to trust his promises? How can intelligent city women possibly trust the words of one whose heart is so unsteady and who is so ungrateful. They must believe him because he speaks so wonderfully and also because his beautiful smiling glances arouse their lust. Oh, why bother talking about him, dear Gopis? Please talk of something else. If he passes his time without us, then we shall similarly pass ours without him. While speaking these words, the young cowherd women remembered Lord Shauri's laughter, his pleasing conversations with them, his attractive glances, his style of walking, and his loving embraces. Thus, they began to cry. The Supreme Lord Balaram, the attractor of all, being expert at various kinds of conciliation, consoled the gopis by relaying to them the confidential messages Lord Krishna had sent with him 
These messages deeply touched the gopis' hearts. Lord Balaram, the personality of Godhead, resided there for the two months of Madhu and Madhava, and during the nights he gave his cowherd girlfriends conjugal pleasure. In the company of numerous women, Lord Balaram enjoyed in a garden by the Yamuna River. This garden was bathed in the rays of the full moon and caressed by breezes bearing the fragrance of night-blooming lotuses. Sent by the demigod Varuna, the divine Varuni liquor flowed from a tree hollow and made the entire forest even more fragrant with its sweet aroma. The wind carried to Balaram the fragrance of that flood of sweet liquor, and when he smelled it, he went to the tree. There he and his female companions drank. As the Gandharvas sang his glories, Lord Balaram enjoyed within the brilliant circle of young women. He appeared just like Indra's elephant, the lordly Aravata, enjoying in the company of she-elephants. At that time, kettle drums resounded in the sky. The Gandharvas joyfully rained down flowers, and the great sages praised Lord Balaram's heroic deeds. As his deeds were sung, Lord Halayuda wandered, as if inebriated among the various forests with his girlfriends. His eyes rolled from the effects of the liquor. Intoxicated with joy, Lord Balaram sported flower garlands, including the famous Vijayanti. He wore a single earring, and beads of perspiration decorated his smiling lotus face like snowflakes. The Lord then summoned the Yamuna River so that he could play in her waters, but she disregarded his command, thinking he was drunk. This angered Balaram, and he began dragging the river with the tip of his plow. Lord Balaram said, O oh, sinful one disrespecting me, you do not come when I call you, but rather move only by your own whim. Therefore, with the tip of my plow, I shall bring you here in a hundred streams. Thus scolded by the Lord, O oh king, the frightened river goddess Yamuna came and fell at the feet of Sri Balaram, the beloved descendant of Yadu. Trembling, she spoke to him the following words, Ram, Ram, O oh mighty armed one, I know nothing of your prowess. With a single portion of yourself you hold up the earth, O Lord of the universe. My Lord, please release me, O soul of the universe. I didn't understand your position as the supreme Godhead, but now I have surrendered unto you, and you are always kind to your devotees. Thereupon Lord Balaram released the Yamuna, and, like the king of the elephants with his entourage of she-elephants, entered the river's water with his female companions. The Lord played in the water to his full satisfaction, and when he came out, Goddess Kanti presented him with blue garments, precious ornaments, and a brilliant necklace. Lord Balaram dressed himself in the blue garments and put on the gold necklace. Anointed with fragrances and beautifully adorned, he appeared as resplendent as Indra's royal elephant. Even today, O King, one can see how the Yamuna flows through the many channels created when it was dragged by the unlimitedly powerful Lord Balaram. Thus she demonstrates his prowess. Thus for Lord Balaram all the nights passed like a single night as he enjoyed in Vraja, his mind enchanted by the exquisite charm and beauty of Vraja's young ladies. Thus ends the 65th chapter of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, Lord Balaram Visits Vrindavan.